everyone welcome to our youtube channel so today we are going to talk about roman jacobson in the previous video also we were discussing about roman jacobson and his structural analysis and how he was very similar to what cesor was saying fernando de cesor right so in this video also we are going to talk about metonymy and metaphor and aphasia also three things that he talked about and these are the terms and the concepts that he discussed so the time frame for his writing is 1896 to 1982 roman jacobson the, he is the person who we are going to talk about so in the previous video as i told you i have talked about the basic things about roman jacobson you can refer to that video and we have also discussed some of the important works that he has done in this video we are going to talk about this essay that he has written two aspects of language and two types of aphastic disturbances this is a work that came out in 1956 it's an essay by roman jacobson he is someone who was himself in you know influenced by fernando de cesor and he influenced many great theorist also so he is a very known person he also talked about the various forms and functions of communication that we discussed in the previous video so you can refer to that video and just take down your notes let us start by discussing metaphor and metonymy two concepts that he talked about so in his essay that came out in 1956 two aspects of language and two types of aphastic disturbances Jacobson proposes that language has a bipolar structure language has what it has a bipolar structure oscillating it is always moving between two poles and there are two poles around between which the language keeps on moving it is the metaphor and then the metonymy these are the two figure of speeches that are also very important theek hai these are the two figure of speeches metaphor and metonymy let us discuss hota kya hai metaphor hota kya hai metonymy what do we mean by metaphor and metonymy also when we will discuss about fernando de cesor we will talk about how he was talking about the syntagmatic and the paradigmatic because roman jacobson also was influenced by fernando de cesor and he talked about syntagmatic and paradigmatic if you already know about these two concepts then you can write it down in the comment section and i'll surely read them and reply right so let us see metaphor kya hota hai metaphor is the first figure of speech that comes and it is the most important one when it when you ever think about anything so it is the first figure of speech that comes to most people's mind it replaces one word or expression with another it is going to replace one word or expression with another to make it even more understanding and interesting it relies basically on the principle of comparison and similarity right so without using as or like when you compare something so when you compare these two things you tend to use metaphor simile is different than metaphor i hope you know this okay for example our very own virginia woolf calls the human mind as the most capricious of insects so unhone human mind ko kisse compare kiya hai ek aise janwar se jo sabse zyada khatarnak hai human mind sabse zyada khatarnak hai and your insects are also those insects that are the most capricious one are same as the human mind right so here she is comparing these two things without the usage of as or like right so if i say she is as pretty as a rose that is a simile but when i completely replace that thing without using like and as but i'm comparing the two things then i call it as a metaphor virginia wolf ka example aap lekar samajh sakte hain ye cheeze that the human mind basically is the most capricious of the insect she is comparing the human mind and a and a very uh, dangerous insect so it works on the principle of comparison and similarity you should remember these things comparison unhone compare kiya hai aur unhone kya kiya hai similarity li hai similarity remember it these two words you should gain out of this page then what is metonymy metonymy has a lesser known value of course we tend to use metaphor more 
it is but of course a widely known sibling of our metaphor we call it as metonymy they are both used to make content either more memorable or easier to remember and understand when you completely replace something you call it as metonymy for example white collar jobs these are the higher position jobs blue collar jobs they refer to the different kinds of occupations and here we are not talking about clothing so we are completely changing and using the other words there then we call it as metaphor theek okay? hai this is called as sorry we call it as metonymy okay now there are two kinds of aphastic disturbances that happen this is what roman jacobson was saying though there are other theorists like huxley i believe so he was someone who was talking about aphasia but roman jacobson compared aphasia the two kinds of aphasia with these two types of figure of speeches that is metaphor and metonymy this is what he is known for and he did this in his essay right so what is aphasia now the question arises aphasia hota kya hai aphasia is a language disturbance there are n number of language disturbances that are there for example there can be say dyslexia a person can suffer from dyslexia that means you have a problem that person has a problem with reading writing structuring of the things okay remembering so this person is suffering from dyslexia if that person is struggling with mathematical operations that is dyscalculia so there are different kinds of problems that a child or anyone can suffer from when we talk about aphasia these are the language disturbances so this person or this any child if he or she is suffering from aphasia they have a problem in making sentences or substituting the words that are there so there are two kinds of language aphasia that are there one can be your similarity disorder and the second can be what the second can be the contiguity disorder the contiguity disorder let us study about these two aphasia that are there what are what is aphasia it's a language disturbance a person who is suffering from aphasia is unable to look at the context properly or either this person is not able to use gram grammar properly and the person is not able to make coherent sentences or do substitution okay so they are suffering because of this a person or a people who do not understand metaphor suffer from similarity disorder jinko metaphor samajh nahi aata hai they are suffering from similarity disorder they struggle when they need to replace one word with the synonyms to unko synonym samajh aate hi nahi hai to wo kisse deal kar rahe hai they are suffering with the similarity disorder they have difficulties understanding different dialects of their native language context plays an important role often crucial role for them they have to understand the context otherwise it becomes very difficult for them they cannot understand the building blocks in isolation but they can easily see how the blocks fit together so maybe they make a grammatical sentence correctly but the context is very important for them because the usage of the correct words replacing the correct words thinking about the various synonyms synonyms kya hote hain the same words with different meanings okay uh, same we have the word that has the same meaning that is synonym so they have difficulty in placing these things people with similarity disorder often use metonymy as a communication device so they tend to use metonymy for example if they do not understand the word cat they might refer to it with an expression it catches mice so they cannot name the object cat they cannot remember what a cat is so they will say uh, it catches mice right so they are suffering from which kind of aphasia they are suffering from similarity disorder similarity disorder then let us see another kind of aphasia this is contiguity disorder people with contiguity disorder struggle with metonymy they give little or no importance to the context now for them context is not important word order is not important but for similarity similarity aphastic people context is very important and 
वर्ड ऑर्डर इज वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट ऑर्डर बिल्कुल सही होता है ग्रामर दे नो कॉन्टेक्स दे नो बट दे कैन नॉट फाइंड आउट द वर्ड टू यूज देर इन दैट सिचुएशन दे कैन अंडरस्टैंड आइसोलेटेड बिल्डिंग ब्लॉक्स बेटर देन द अरेजमेंट ऑफ सच ब्लॉक्स सो इट्स डिफिकल्ट फॉर देम टू मेक मीनिंगफुल सेंटेंसेस बट इट इज वेरी डिफिकल्ट फॉर देम टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्टेक्स ओके दे इंस्टेड सी कंपाउंड वर्ड एज यूनिक विदाउट नोटिसिंग द पार्ट दे वर मेड अप ऑफ दे अडॉप्ट न्यू वो कैबलरी इजीली बट दे स्ट्रगल विद ग्रामर एस्पेशली दे आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम मेकिंग the use of conjunction different types of inflection they are not able to understand those things coherent sentences unse form nahi ho pate hai they often omit context related words such as conjunctions and prepositions unlike the opposite group which relies on such words so unlike the other people suffering from similarity disorder these people are unable to make their own sentences while they would say that if they are not able to remember cat so they will say that something that catches mice right so this sentence is right but they are not able to grasp the words as compared to the contiguity disorder where they can actually look for different words from the vocabulary they are quick with remember remembering the things but they are not able to make good sentences for them the context is a big problem right so these are the two things that you have to remember this is what roman jacobson did and he was actually very much influenced with fernandez de saussure fernandez de saussure actually talked about syntagmatic and paradigmatic way of writing syntagmatic and paradigmatic way of writing and he in his essay tend to use these things so as i told you you are going to write about syntagmatic and paradigmatic um uh, usage in the comment below and then you have to study about the two aphasias that are there what are the two aphasias that he is talking about and what are the two figure of speeches first is metaphor the second is metonymy metaphor में आप डायरेक्टली कंपेयर कर देते हो मेटोनमी में आप सब्सटीट्यूशन करते हो यू आर सब्सटीट्यूटिंग समथिंग फॉर समथिंग राइट देन इफ यू आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम सिमिलैरिटी डिसऑर्डर इफ यू आर सफरिंग फ्रॉम सिमिलैरिटी डिसऑर्डर दिस इज द फर्स्ट डिसऑर्डर देन यू टेंड टू अंडरस्टैंड द कॉन्टेक्स प्रॉपरली बट यू आर नॉट एबल टू अंडरस्टैंड और रिप्लेस द वर्ड विद द सिनोनिम्स you are very bad with it you are you are finding it very difficult to see the different dialectics that are seen in the language context is very very important to you and it is very clear to you but then it becomes difficult to choose the words they cannot understand the building blocks in isolation they cannot understand the words in isolation but when it is in a form of a sentence jab wo sentence ki form mein hai they can very well use it people with similarity disorder often use metonymy as a communication device and they tend to use metonymy so similarity disorder ke andar kya missing hota hai metaphors missing hote hain and contiguity disorder ke andar kya use ho kya nahi hota hai metonymy use nahi ho pata hai theek hai and i hope with this example the things are clear then we have the contiguity disorder where you stumble from metonymy here the context is given little importance the word order is given little importance they can understand the isolated blocks but making a sentence in a arrangement form is very very difficult right so you have to remember also you have to remember what is the name of the work the name of the work the essay that came out in 1956 is two aspects of language and two types of aphastic disturbances right so with this i will end my the session that i had the video i hope you liked it i hope you gained something out of it thank you so much i'll see you soon with another another video another set of various concepts given by the theorists till then thank you so much bye bye